wagging, never flagging. Wagga wagging, never flagging. Wagga wagging, never flagging. Wagga wagging, never flagging. Wagga wagging. Tell a tale of cock and bull, of convincing detail full. Tell three pandas haven't defend us. What a tale of cock and bull. What a tale of cock. What a tale of bull. What a tale of cock. What a tale of bull. What a tale of cock and bull. Cock and bull. Cock and bull. Haven't defend us. What a tale of cock and bull. haste with which I hurried headlong into the bonds of matrimony with heaven knows whom. As far as I remember, she should have been young. But I doubt whether in my then plight I should have taken much note of her, even had not her face been covered with a kerchief. Free? <laughs> the tower bonds were but a thread of silk compared to these conjugal fetters, fool that I was, placed upon mine own hands. From the one, I freed myself readily enough. How to break the other? Free from his fetters grim, free to depart. Free both in life and limb, in all but heart. Bound To Dame Crother's kind nursing, eh? Aye, deuce take the old meddler. <laughs> that were a sorry trick you played me, sir, bringing the fainting girl to me. Gave the old lady an excuse to take up her quarters in my house. In the past two years, I've shunned her like the plague. <laughs> Another day of it, and she would have married me. <laughs> Good Lord, here she comes again. I leave go. Lady Sergeant Harold, don't go. I have something of grave import to say to thee. It's coming. I faith, I think I'm not wanted here. Nay, <laughs> Master Leonard, I've not to say to thy father that his son may not hear. True, I'm one of the family I had forgotten. Tis about this Elsie Maynard. A pretty girl, Master Leonard. 
Aye, fell as a peach blossom, what then? She hath a liking for thee, or I mistake not. Oh, with all my heart, she's as dainty a little maid as you'll find on a midsummer day's march. Then be warned in time, and give not thy heart to her. Oh, I know what it is to give my heart to one who will have none of it. Aye, she knows all about that. <laughs> Oh, why should my boy take heed of her? She's a good girl, Dame Carruthers. Good enough for aught I know, but she is no girl. She's a married woman. <laughs> a married woman? Tush, old lady. Why, she's promised a jack point, the lieutenant's new jester. Tush, a nineteenth old man. As my niece Kate sat by her bedside today, Miss Elsie slept. And as she slept, she moaned and groaned and turned this way and that way and... How shall I marry one I have never seen? Quoth she. Then. A hundred crowns? Quoth she. Then. Is it certain he is to die in an hour? Quoth she. Then. I love him not, and yet I am his wife. Quoth she. Is it not so, Kate? I am. Tis even so. Art thou sure of all this? I am, sir, for I wrote it all down in my tablet. Now mark my words, it was of this fair that she spake, and he is her husband, or I'll swallow my kirtle. Oh. Is this true, sir? True? Why, the girl was raving. Ah, uh, why should she marry a man who had but an hour to live? Marry? There be those who would marry but for a minute, rather than die old maids. <laughs> Aye, and I know one of them. <laughs> Plungent fortune's lucky bag. I might have fared worse with my eyes open. But now she comes to test her principles. Does not every husband has a chance of wooing his own wife? <laughs> Mistress Elsie. Master Leonard. So, thou leavest us tonight. Yes, Master Leonard. I have been kindly tended, and I almost fear I am loath to go. And this Fairfax, wast thou glad when he escaped? Why, truly, Master Leonard. It is a sad thing that a, a young and gallant gentleman should die in the very fullness of his life. And when thou didst faint in my arms, it was for joy to his safety. It may be so. I was highly wrought, Master Leonard, and I am but a girl, and so when I am highly wrought, 
I faint. <laughs> now dost thou know I am consumed with a father's jealousy? Thou? And of whom? Well, this Fairfax, surely. Ah, of Colonel Fairfax. Shall I be frank with thee? I love thee. Ardently. Passionately. I have loved thee these past two days, which is a long time. <laughs> and I would fain join my life to thine. Master Leonard, thou art jesting. Jesting? May I shrivel into raisins if I jest? I love thee with a love that is a fever, with a love that is a frenzy, with a love that eateth up my heart. What sayest thou? Thou wilt not let my heart be eaten up. Oh, mercy, what have I to say? Dost thou love me, or hast thou been insensible these past two days? I love all brave men. I fail as love in excess. I thank heaven there are many brave men in England, but if thou lovest them all, I withdraw my thanks. Oh, but I love the bravest best. But I may not listen. I am not free. I am a wife. Thou? A wife? His name, his house are numbered. Nay, his grave is dug in his every time said, I've come. His name. Oh, sir, keep my secret. This is the only barrier that fate could set up between us. My husband is none other than no fair fact. The greatest villain, none hung. The most ill favored, ill mannered, ill natured, ill omened, ill tempered dog in all Christendom. He is very like. He is not to me, for I never saw him. I was blindfolded, and he was to have died within the hour, and he did not die. And I am wedded to him, and my heart is broken. He was to have died, and did not die. The scoundrel. <laughs> the ill tempered scoundrel. Thou shouldst have insisted on his dying first, to make sure. <laughs> Tis the only way with these fair faxes. I now wish I had. <laughs> a thirsty little maiden. I'll think on this fair fax. Be mine. What? He will never know, and he dares not show himself. And if he dare, what art thou to him? Fly with me. We'll be married tomorrow, and thou shalt be the happiest wife in all England. Mr. Leonard! I am amazed. Is it thus that brave soldiers speak to poor girls? Oh, for shame, for shame! I am wed, not the less because I love not my husband. I am a wife, sir, and I have a duty, and, oh, sir, thy words terrify me. They're not honest, they're wicked words, and unworthy of thy great and brave heart. Oh, shame upon thee, shame upon thee! Nay, I'll say, I did just to think, to, just to try thee. I'm 
Tis done thus. Mistress Elsie, there is one here who thou knowest loves thee right well. That he does, right well. He is but a man of poor estate, but he hath an honest and loving heart. And he will be a true and trusty husband to thee. And thou wilt be his wife. Thou shalt lie curled up in his heart like a little squirrel in his knee. Tis a pretty figure. The maggot in a nut lies closer, but a squirrel will do. He knows thou wast a wife, an unloved and unloving wife, and his heart was near to break thee. But now thine unloving husband is dead, and thou art free. And he would fain pray that thou wast talking unto him, and give him hope that thou wast one day be his. He thinks he kisses her hand. Why, it's bodikins, what does it mean? <coughs> What's this, thou sweetheart? Wilt thou be this poor little fellow's wife? If the good brave man, is he a brave man? So men say. That's not true, but I'll let it pass. Well, if the brave man will be content with the poor, penniless, untaught maid. We do, but let that pass. Then I will be his true and loving wife, and that with my heart of hearts. My own dear love. Oh, wait, what's all this? Brother, brother, this is unseemly. That I cannot let pass. Hold, did not master let it. And that if it shook half his feet, but I think thou art overpaying thyself. Nay, that is what I'll see to say. I promise thee I would show thee how to woo. And herein lies the proof of the virtue of my teaching. <laughs> Go thou and apply it elsewhere. <laughs> Master 
So take heart and tell her, that's thou, that thou, uh, that's me, lovest her, uh, thee, and, and, well, I'm a miserable old man, and I ain't done it, uh, that's me. Uh, but not a word about Fairfax, and the price of thy silence is? Meryl's heart. Oh, no. Meryl's hand. It's the same thing. Is it? Rapture, rapture, when love's votary flush with capture seeks the notary. Joy and jollity, then is quality. Reigns frivolity, rapture, rapture. Joy and jollity, then is quality. Reigns frivolity, rapture, rapture. Doleful, doleful wind. Manity with his soul full of satanity, courting privity, down declivity, seeks captivity, doleful, doleful, courting privity, down declivity, seeks captivity, doleful, doleful. Joyful, joyful, when virginity seeks so joyful, man's affinity, fate of flowery, bright and flowery is her dowry, joyful, joyful, fate of flowery, bright and flowery is her dowry, joyful, joyful. Ghastly, ghastly, when men sorrowful, firstly, lastly, of tomorrow. After Terry yields to Harry, goes a merry, ghastly, ghastly, joyful, joyful, ghastly, ghastly, joyful, joyful, ghastly, ghastly, joyful, ghastly, 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 ghastly,